Upon your arrival, you probably formed an opinion about Italian drivers. Most American drivers are put into a state of shock at their first Italian driving experience. The high volume of traffic, narrow roads and streets, and mixture of horse carts and high-speed cars leaves most people both amused and terrified at the prospect of joining this fray. The first step to enjoying safe driving in Italy is understanding the Italian drivers who are described as some of the best drivers in Europe. Statistics of fatal accidents per million miles driven tend to prove this. Most problems that occur between United States and Italian drivers come from different driving philosophies. The Italian is probably one of the most aggressive drivers you will ever encounter. He expects you to react to his driving action. He will use his horn and lights to indicate his intention of not giving way or when expecting to be given the right of way. Blowing your horn is not impolite in Italy. It is a necessary part of the driving language and tells the other drivers your intentions. The Italian driver will do a number of things that are unsafe and illegal for you to try. Roads in Italy have center line markings, the same as the United States, but expect passing at any time on curves, hills, intersections, whenever. When you pass, remember, the narrower roads and smaller cars affect your speed and depth perception. American drivers are defensive and expect the same driving habits in others. The Italian driver expects you to look out for him. He may make turns without looking in the rearview mirror or open the driver's door into traffic. Learn to watch not only the cars, but the driver and his passengers for clues to potential actions. City intersections are prime locations for fender benders. Streets will be crowded. Drivers will maneuver for right of way, often slipping into remarkably small openings. So use caution, especially when making a turn. Make sure no one has slipped into your blind spot. Two-wheeled vehicles are a menace in cities. They're a special problem due to their high number and erratic habits. During high winds, give special care to passing, as gusts can easily throw bicycles, as well as light motorcycles, into traffic. Opposite from these high-speed vehicles are the local horse carts and various animals you can expect both in town and on the highways. Remember, in most cases, if you have an accident involving an animal, you will be at fault. Use caution around animals, especially in passing and at night. Finally, there is pedestrian traffic. Expect to find people walking at any hour, especially in small towns. These towns often do not have sidewalks, and combined with the frequent wearing of dark clothing, makes pedestrians a particular hazard. An additional night driving tip, if you're driving a European car, note that it may not have seal beam headlights. This means that your low beam is much dimmer than the cars you're accustomed to. If you're driving 45 miles per hour, for example, in low beam, you're overdriving your headlights and cannot stop in time. Also, always turn your headlights on in a tunnel. It's the law. The small European car has a number of other characteristics to be concerned with. An American car leans into a curve, alerting the driver of excessive speed in a turn. The minis do not lean, and frequently the first indication of excessive speed is a slide, which when combined with overcorrection leads to trouble. Additionally, these cars are light and are subject to the effects of wind and road hazards. The excellent responsive handling characteristics of these cars leads to overconfidence and the taking of unnecessary risks. You 
not drive beyond your ability or your cars. You will have noticed the international signs. Some of you may already have been familiarized with a number of them in the United States. They generally fall into three types. A red triangle surrounding white, indicating a warning, and a red circle surrounding white or blue, indicating something is prohibited. All other types of circle signs indicate something is required. Study the handouts and memorize the various types of signs you will encounter. Most are very logical and are easy to remember. Look for the signs to be posted anywhere, on trees, buildings, and posts. And remember, they're placed only when necessary. So if there is one, obey it. There is a reason for its being there. While traveling through Italy, you'll find three classes of roads. First are the autostrada, which are some of the best highways in the world. These are controlled access toll roads that are built for maintaining a constant highway speed. They are normally in excellent condition, well marked, and are normally a most pleasant driving experience. The second type of road is the four-lane main road. These are good, but are not maintained as well as the autostrada. Some areas are very rough and can be filled with chuck holes. These roads are more narrow than the United States highways, so trucks and buses can take up two lanes. They also have a stone curb bordering the outside lanes, which, if struck at high speed, can be dangerous. Finally, there are local or secondary roads. They're the most scenic and take you to the more interesting sites in Italy, but they are also, by far, the most hazardous. They range from poor to exceptionally good condition. They are very narrow, with all types of obstacles, ditches, and trees, and side roads are frequently hidden. Improperly banked, unmarked curves sneak up on you and can be real trouble for the uncautious, so drive with care. All these roads are subject to the extremes of Italian weather. Don't forget to pump your brakes to dry them out if you pass through a flooded area. If, despite all of your caution, you have an accident, there are a number of military and Italian laws to remember. If anyone is injured in an accident, by Italian law, you must stop and render aid to the injured. And if possible, see that they are transported to the nearest medical facility. This is the Italian Mercy Law, a vital necessity due to the lack of phone and emergency equipment. In a local community, if you are injured in an accident, an Italian will stop, put you in his car, and take you to the nearest hospital. Italians follow this law to the letter. If you come onto an accident where aid is already being given, do not block the road by also stopping, compounding the potential for additional accidents. If you've been in an accident, notify your insurance company within 72 hours to keep from breaking your contract. Also, contact your local shore patrol and give a full report. With alert, defensive driving within safe speeds, your tour will be a safe and enjoyable one, and you'll survive driving in Italy. <laughs>